Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, I got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach lock off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM. On FBC News tonight, new motor bridge brings hope to thousands of people in Ba. Banking industry encouraged to lead economic growth and teachers commended for their efforts in moulding good citizens. Good evening and welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. A new motor bridge worth over $16 million was opened by the Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama in Ba yesterday. The new bridge and five kilometres of newly sealed road is seen as a symbol of the government's commitment to rural communities. Christopher Chand reports. This new bridge will bring relief to thousands of motor residents who have long suffered during natural disasters. It's been a long journey to today, after the old bridge was washed away in January 2012 flood. Since then, not one but two Irish crossings had to be built here after the first was destroyed in the March flood, which uh, devastated the entire Western Division. The project was completed three months ahead of schedule by China Railway with funding from the Exim Bank of China. It is a mark of permanence and investment in this community, in the people who live and work here. This bridge is a lifeline for those who rely on it. It provides thousands of Fijians access to towns and hospitals. The new development is also expected to boost the sugar industry. The new motor bridge will give farmers peace of mind knowing that, they, uh, that the cane they plant will get to the mill no matter what the weather is. They will no longer have to risk their money and their immense effort on the chance the cane will make it. That's why a bridge immune to flooding is so important. It will once again unlock this area's potential. It's a new beginning for the people of Moto. Finally, a bridge that will withstand the forces of Mother Nature. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Fiji's first ever locally built semi-submersible worth around $1.8 million has been launched in Nandi. It will take tourists on underwater sightseeing trips, a new attraction for the industry and for visitors to our shores. Christopher Chand with this story. The aptly named Sea View an underwater viewing vessel built specifically for the marine tourism market. Tourism, ladies and gentlemen, requires a constant creation or innovation of new ways of attracting tourists to Fiji. Because if we don't, uh, we'll, the numbers will drop. If we don't, then our numbers will not only drop, but Fiji will not become as exciting as other countries. Rob Vendamoig of Zimbabwe owns this submarine. It took more than a year to build and at 18 meters in length, it's one of the longest of its type in the world. Um, look, the, the total investment of the, of the company is around 1.8 million in the sea view, but that's not only the, the, the investment in the sea view, it's also the infrastructure around it. So, yeah. The sea view was originally expected to be launched in March this year. But there were a number of challenges. Well, we had Cyclone Evan came through, which basically closed us down for two months. And there were the usual issues with the new vessel. You know, we, we're, not, we're not that far behind. It's, it's, it's been a very, very good build. The Sea View will make three trips a day around a marine protected area known as the Tambua Reef near the Malolo waters. Christopher Chand, FBC News. The controversial Aztec dress by leading New York fashion designer Nanette Lepore has been withdrawn from sale. But it will certainly be discussed at a meeting next month about the use of indigenous designs. The dress, featuring a Fijian Masi-like design, has been subject to scrutiny by Pacific Islands community locally and abroad. Eleanor Turangavu spoke to Vaimoana 
New Mei Tolu, a Tongan artist who led the campaign against getting the dress off the catalogue. Nanette Lepo's designs are said to be adored by famous actresses, singers and other world figures, including the U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama herself. But nothing prepared Lepo to the slew of criticism she received after she launched the so-called Aztec dress. This has forced the designer to publicly apologize on her Facebook page and in a meeting with Pacific artists who have been lobbying against the dress. They, first of all, were just very apologetic. They, you know, um, were apologizing and said that they, it was a total accident um, that, first of all, that they were not aware that it was Fiji and Masi. New Meitolu initially wrote to Lepo to acknowledge the designs were Fijian and also gave suggestions on how she could go about in doing so. She then led a petition against the designer. However, following the meeting with Lepo's company, the designer's apology and the withdrawal of the dress from sale, the petition will now be changed. Um, we're actually looking at amending the petition because Nanette Lepo would like to sign the petition herself. And um, we're looking at amending it in, in, in putting the title instead of Nanette Lepore Stop Appropriating Tradition to Jean Taka Design Fema, because that's what she has. She, she's holding herself accountable for that, and she has stopped doing that. We're looking at amending the petition. The meeting also resolved to hold an event next month where artists, designers, and the indigenous community in New York will get together and voice their concerns on the issue of indigenous designs being used by fashion designers. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. The Education Ministry has commended teachers for their efforts. Marking World Teachers Day, Permanent Secretary for Education Dr. Bridge Lal says teachers help create a better future. Wasita Kote Wasawasa reports. While closing a week-long Ministry Expo at the Government Information Centre in Suva today, Dr. Bridge Lal highlighted the link between education and society. Do not educate your child to be rich. Educate him or her to be happy. So when her, he or she grows up, she will, he or she will know the value of things and not the price of things. Dr. Lal says teaching is a noble profession, one that helps mold a child from a very young age. We celebrate for the teachers who educate our students to be better global citizens and to respect the cultural diversity of this world. The Permanent Secretary is calling on all teachers to remain true to their calling. As we stand to save all, it is important to take note of this. If you can't be a pencil to write someone's happiness, then try to be a nice eraser to remove their sadness, rather than add sadness in anyone's life. The week-long expo was also able to help people learn about the services of the Education Ministry. Vasito Kotewasawasa, FBC News. Coming up, Fijian made film promotes safe motherhood. You can join us on The Breakfast Show Every weekday from Monday to Friday 6am till 9am Right here on Today FM That's right Nisambulo binaka Oya wanae kamanalani Oni nandoro ngozi yao Mwena ziwa kina ruwe na bisinga Mwena moni iti kina baka rumbu Kena Radio Fiji 1 Nando maibiti bongani biya nyanu Na mwaka talengana Venga ono sasi biya nyanu Tina kaloko na bimbongi ni buki lulu Kena vima mani walu Na bimbongi ni baka ruwai Mwena mboza ni balu Ninge na maka Welcome back to FBC News. Labour Minister Chone Usamate has called on the banking sector to lead by example in all aspects of business. Launching the second Fiji Institute of Bankers Convention in Lamy today, he reminded banks of the role employees play in the growth of the industry. Sharin Lata reports. This year's convention theme is Banking Sector in Fiji Transformation and Growth. The banking sector has played a huge part in national development and the Labour Minister has encouraged local operators to help meet the 3.2% economic growth projection. Fiji will need bankers with daring and imagination and confidence to help this growth reach its full potential. Osamate strongly believes 
New graduates should be given a chance to prove themselves in this sector. Offer them an opportunity to be on attachment and thus pick up industry skills. Giving them an opportunity to learn workplace skills by giving them attachments. This also provides employers an opportunity to gauge the abilities of these young workers. Banks pay some of the best salaries in Fiji. With a minimum wage in the banking and finance sector at $10.10 per hour. Osamate says this should be considered for outsourced services. All organizations in the banking sector to make sure that when you do subcontract services out, whether it is for security or cleaning or anything else, that you make sure that you get, get that you that you do get a good deal for your company, but at the same time. It should not be such a fantastic deal that it does not allow your subcontractors to at least pay the mandated minimum wage rates. The Fiji Institute of Bankers was formed 21 years ago to recognize and promote professional status of bankers in Fiji. This evening, the industry will award the employees and institutions for their contributions. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The government has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Bar Chamber of Commerce in a public-private partnership to build a brand new hospital for Bar. Prime Minister Vareng Mbainimarama yesterday signed the agreement that will benefit close to 90,000 people in the area. The new Bar Hospital will be constructed at Klopkot with the government allocating $7.3 million for the first phase of construction. The total project cost is $23 million and will be completed in stages. The new Bar Hospital will be such a facility and it's long overdue. You all know the state of the old hospital. It's uh, 87 years old and shows the signs of its uh, age. The building is run down and at this point beyond repair. We are not interested in any more band-aid solution. It's time for us to move forward with a new project. Work on the new hospital is likely to start in January. And from Bar to Nandi, staff at Nandi Hospital can expect an improved working environment with renovated facilities. Despite limited funds, the hospital board says it's committed to better working conditions. Akusita Tale has more. Providing comfort for patients and staff has always been the hospital's first priority. It's already renovated the single nurse's quarters, which has 13 bedrooms, a kitchen and a lounge area. Since it sits on top of the maternity block, it started affecting the maternity ward and the board decided to spend $75,000 and get it renovated. Khan says they're looking for donations to renovate the maternity ward, which needs more work and a hot water system has been put in place to cater for new mothers. They used to use ants to heat up the water and, you know, especially mothers who have delivered can't take a cold shower, you know, they need water. So what we have done is we installed two solar heaters on the, on the top of the roof. $40,000 has also been kept aside to build a new canteen and promote healthy living. We will look at what the Ministry of Health is also emphasizing is the health food. So we will basically have foods what is recommended by our dietitians, not those oily foods. There are also plans to expand the general outpatients ward to make room for more patients. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Bright Future Films and the Fiji School of Medicine have signed contracts with actors and crew for what it says is a short 100% locally made film. Its director Rajneel Prasad says the film has a strong message and will be released in January. Neelam Raj with the story. The film is Fijian made and uses entertainment education drama format meaning it presents facts through drama. Uh, this film is a fully 100% locally made film. Uh, all the actors are all local. Uh, from the production side, uh, the designers, uh, the makeup artists are all Fijian. So we are proud to say that this is a Fijian made movie. The film is based on safe motherhood with a very significant title, Giving Life. Most mothers, expected mothers and most parents, parents-to-be, uh, expecting parents, they do not go to clinics on time. 
So this film uh, hopes to address that issue and tell you the importance of uh, um, going to attending your clinics on time and um, uh, doing things right. Um, we also address the issue of uh, teenage pregnancy. The 20,000 short film is set to release in January. This film uh, is, uh, is set to, uh, to, uh, to shoot is on uh, 20th and 21st of this month. Uh, we've got a three weeks of schedule for shooting. This film is going to be released in January. Film director Reginal Prasad believes that films are a powerful medium to educate prospective parents on the do's and don'ts to maintain a safe pregnancy. Neelam Raj, FBC News. Coming up, Sevens coach Ben Ryan confident of Fiji defending Gold Coast Sevens title. And Suva football team hoping for some good luck at the IDC tournament. Bola. Oya wa sala bilawa. Ndoba te kiao mena diwa kina tini karona kaloko na single bo ni moniti kina va romboka. Kako ni valata na no musu ni sarisari. Na kaisa mo rian dolo loma le ne vani ni nao. Ongori ke de mena diwa kina tini karona kaloko na single bo ni moniti kina va romboka. Ena bula FM number 2 en sere. Jahan ho pyar ka basera aur rishto ki khushbu. Wo hai aapka apna ghar sansar. Join me on Ghar Sansar, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 12 p.m., only on Radio Fiji 2. Welcome to FPC Sports. Fiji was once again given a lesson in sevens rugby as the Samoans beat Fiji 31-17 in the Oceania Sevens final this afternoon at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. In the Fiji Water Centennial International Sevens Final, Fiji Barbarians beat Argentina 19-10. Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan is happy with the Digicel Fiji Sevens performance in the Oceania Sevens. He still has some things to work on before the defence of the Gold Coast Sevens next weekend. Shelvin Chan spoke to Ryan. The team was selected for him, but coach Ben Ryan says he is happy with what he saw in the Oceania tournament. He says he is keeping an eye open for those who are willing to work hard. Hard because um, there'll be big games this year that will be just on very small margins. And so those things, work hard, get off the floor a little bit quicker once you've made the tackle. Um, I'm seeing that and I want to continue to, to make sure that becomes something that is standard. The coach has identified poor concentration as an area of weakness, something he intends to work on. They're, they're, they're well oiled. Um, so it's just small things I'm looking at, you know. Last night I was speaking, speaking to Eli about his kickoff and just concentrating. And then this morning he comes out and kicks five from six conversions, two touchline conversions. So he just needed to concentrate, a little technical things. Ryan believes a Fiji needs to play some tough games. Facing opposition will only help the team realise its full potential. You want, you want a hard game, you know. I, it won't do us any harm if we have a hard game. Personally, it won't do us any harm if, if, if somebody beats us this weekend because it's all things that we're trying to learn so that for Gold Coast and beyond, we get better. I'm looking at the processes. Uh, so, and, and if you get those right, you'll win games. And uh, you know, we need to just concentrate on that. After this weekend, Ryan will only have four days with the boys in the Gold Coast. He's confident of the team's fitness and hopes that his tactical skills will help Fiji make it three in a row. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. Fiji isn't ready to host a leg of the IRB 7 series, says tournament director Beth Coulter. The Fiji Rugby Union and the Fiji Sports Council had hoped that with the Fiji Water Centennial Tournament and the new ANZ Stadium, things might swing Fiji's way. That infrastructure that goes on behind the scenes, it's all very well having the teams playing on the pitch, but to get them to play to the best um, competition that they can, you need to make sure that player welfare is looked after. That means that they're all on the same level of um, support, they're all staying in the same location, they've all got the same time to, to training pitches. Um, nourishment, um, all of the physio support, etc. It's a very, very high standard now that the, the players have to perform to. Colter says a lot more work needs to be done as Fiji also doesn't meet broadcast requirements. What I'd like to see is more of the Fiji Rugby Union coming, their board members, etc., coming to an international tournament. Uh, and we're going to be able to do that next week in the Gold Coast. 
Colta says IRB will continue to help Fiji become able to host the tournament. The Flying Fijians are working on the November Tour of Europe, hoping to make a turnaround from last year's disappointing performance. Players gathered at the Nasova Ground in Suva to familiarise themselves with the new scrum techniques to be used in the four tests. Shelvin Chant has more. It's deja vu for most of the boys. Last year when the Flying Fijians travelled to Europe, they had to learn new scrum laws. Now, instead of the touch, crouch, pause and engage, the players will have to adapt to the crouch, bind and set, designed to lessen neck injuries. The coach knows the value of getting the scrums right. Last year we were really down with it because we played uh, in the first test and we played with a new uh, scrum boot and we were really pushing around. So that's what we are doing now. And we're trying to bring out the boys for the new scrum boots. So maybe when we start playing in sports, we will be... Last year, Fiji only managed one win on their northern tour against Georgia. Even English club sides ran rampant. One factor was that European clubs weren't releasing players. The flying Fijians have to be prepared now. Uh, starting from the PNC, from our performance in the PNC, now we are aware of what will happen in the Europe tour. So right now we are contacting all the boys that are playing in the, that will recently play in the PNC. The overseas base players will join the team in France for a week-long campaign in Pepinio. This year, the Flying Fijian plays Portugal, Romania, Italy and the British Barbarians. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. Last year, Suva wrestled the court's inter-district title away from Bar on its home turf. This year, the capital city side is confident of a successful title defence with some luck on western soil. Suva moved into camp last week, an indication of how serious it is about the IDC. The team hasn't won any titles this year and surely doesn't want to lose the IDC either. We are in serious preparation regarding the tournament IDC as a defending champion, so we want to defend uh, this IDC trophy. And uh, you have seen the team has been playing a game against uh, Lotoka, and I think there is a big, uh, good, uh, uh, big uh, boost to the team when the team moved uh, to the west. Suva will be missing key players. The most notable will be Nigerian Sanisa, who moved to Mba and then was deported. Samuel Avula already left uh, for his peacekeeping duty in Chennai. Uh, so uh, with uh, Joshua Wilson left with the whole commitment. Officials are keeping their fingers crossed that fans will rally behind them in the IDC. Toka lovers to come in big numbers and support their team. I think without your support it will be difficult to win the tournament in West. But uh, the way they, they supported in previous years, I think definitely the big number from Suva will be going at Chechel Park and supporting the team. The IDC kicks off on Wednesday, but the Super Premier Games begin Thursday. As defending champions, Suva will be playing in the opener against a revamped Nanronga side. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. The IDC torch relay got underway this morning from Court Samambula. The torch entourage then headed off to Navua and stopped briefly in Singatoka and Nandi before reaching Lotoka, where the Fiji FA Platinum Carnival is being held. Lotoka also hosts the IDC tournament from Wednesday. Also on the cards on Wednesday is the election of the vice presidents. Today's weather was generally fine, however, Suva, Savu Savu and Lambasa did get some cloud cover in the afternoon. Despite experiencing cloudy periods, Lambasa leads the temperature table tonight at 32 degrees. Suva and Savu Savu were the lowest at 28 degrees. No readings for bar. Tomorrow's forecast is for cloudy periods developing into slight showers and rain by the afternoon. My advice, keep the umbrella or raincoat on standby unless you intend to have a rain bath. Looking at Monday, we'll continue to experience rain, possibly heavy at times and few thunderstorms over most places. Northeasterly winds 15 to 20 knots, expect rough seas as well. A strong wind warning remains in force for the Vatui Ra passages, Vanualevu and northern Lao waters. The headlines again, new motor bridge brings hope to thousands of people in Ba. 
The banking industry has been encouraged to lead economic growth and teachers commended for their efforts in molding good citizens. To the poll question now. Can Fiji defend its Gold Coast Sevens title? Visit www.fpc.com.fj to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's your news tonight. I'll be back again tomorrow. Good night. की शादी होने वाली है पांच पांच बच्चे होंगे पांच 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 हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेणु सुनते रहिए मिर्च मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक